So yes, uh, thank you for having me here. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about um, how JSX Graph has been used in numbers um, and then a little bit about the future. Um, so I'm the, the lead developer of numbers. Um, this is where I live. I, I've enjoyed all these Zoom conferences, seeing places around the world. So this is my bit of the world. Uh, I live very close to this lighthouse. Um, numbers is uh, an open source e-assessment system um, developed at Newcastle. Uh, I'm the lead developer and it's existed for just over 10 years. Um, and pretty much from the beginning, it had an extension for using JSX Graph. Um, I think JSX Graph is very good. Um, it's a, it was a good way of, of getting um, interactive graphics in is what we were looking for at the time. Um, so in preparation for this, I had a look on the um, public database that we have um, used by people around the world. Um, and there are more than 4,000 questions using the JSX Graph extension, um, of which more than 1,000 are published under Creative Commons licenses, so free for anybody to reuse. Um, so that makes JSX Graph the most popular extension in numbers. Um, it's got roughly twice as many published questions as the GeoGebra extension does. Um, I think people have mainly been using it by taking examples that I've made and copying them and altering in certain ways. Um, I didn't, didn't really feel like digging in too deeply into exactly what everybody's doing to get examples. So the examples I'm going to show today are pretty much all made by um, my team at Newcastle. Um, okay, so um, the reason I'm doing this talk is that uh, I saw the JSX Graph conference last year and thought I haven't done anything with JSX Graph in ages. Uh, and I haven't really contributed back. Um, so I put in this proposal to pressure myself into doing a bit more work on the, the link between numbers and JSX graph. Um, and so I've been frantically writing code in the past few days when I realized I still had to do that. Um, okay, so uh, I'm gonna talk about my, my opinions about um, interactive or randomized graphics, um, which is what we need in e-assessment. Um, one of the aims of numbers is that it should be easy for um, people to write questions. Uh, and I try to minimize the amount of code that they have to write. Um, particularly, um, even though numbers is implemented in JavaScript, I don't, don't really like it when question authors have to write JavaScript code. Um, so that's one of the aims for, for making diagrams. What I really like is a domain specific language for producing diagrams. Um, some examples of these are um, Euclides, um, Asymptote, and Tix, the, um, the LaTeX package. Um, I'd really like to have that available so that it's, it's possible to write um, short scripts that produce quite sophisticated diagrams. Um, something that happens within e-assessment is that you get randomized questions. Um, so of course, a, a diagram should reflect that and should use the, the randomized variables that the question produces. Um, so that's good for illustration. Um, I think um, JSX Graph is very good for the task of either illustrating something or for um, allowing students to explore or discover uh, within a certain topic. Um, for marking, which is what numbers is really about, it's about assessment. Um, I'm still not sure how I feel about assessing diagrams and pictures. Um, I think it's complicated and that's one of the reasons I haven't done much with it in 10 years. Um, but as an abstract goal, being able to look at the state of the diagram and use that in marking um, would be good. Um, and I want there to be an easy way of doing that. Um, and then finally, the most complicated goal, I think, is having the link between um, a diagram and places where the student can type an answer. Um, so in numbers, you can have numerical inputs or mathematical expressions or multiple choice questions. Um, and based on the talks yesterday, um, that's a very common task. Um, so there are a few examples. Uh, shown in different systems yesterday and even some questions that looked exactly similar to the ideas I'd come up with to sort of test the, the, the numbers extension um, 
So I think this is a really common uh, problem. So um, I'm going to do a, a double whammy here. I'm first going to say the good things, which is quite a short list because it's hard to think about the things that you really appreciate in JSX Graph. Uh, and then I'm going to um, say uh, about some barriers to use. Um, so I like that JSX Graph is self-contained um, by comparison to GeoGebra, which um, at the moment you have to embed from GeoGebra.org. Um, and the authoring stuff is all based over there. I like that it's just a, a JavaScript library and I like that it's fast. Um, it loads very quickly in particular. Um, and as I said, it's, it's really good for just showing an illustration or for having some interactivity that doesn't really um, uh, go into the marking too much. Um, so, or uh, dynamic links between the student input and then they might go and answer some questions using text inputs later on. I think that's really good. Um, so here's my longer list of barriers to using JSX Graph. Uh, and I think this is the reason I haven't done too much with it. Um, constructing diagrams in JavaScript. I, JavaScript is a generic language. The syntax isn't great for producing geometrical diagrams, I don't think. Um, so I've looked into different things. Uh, I know that Jesse code exists, um, but I'm not sure about the status of Jesse code. And I don't, the, the documentation is quite bare. Um, I don't know um, how much is uh, intended to be supported. Um, I found styling elements in JSX graph quite tricky. Um, really, I'd like to write something like a, a style sheet that applies through the diagram. Um, having to set um, uh, sort of stroke color and highlight color and everything on each individual object is tricky. Um, I know that you can set board options uh, when you start, but I think all of that is, I'd like to be able to like take a group of objects and make them all a certain color. Um, so these are all things that I will gradually submit issues and pull requests on GitHub for. Um, Something that I raised recently is accessibility. It's really important. And in fact, in the UK, at least now, it's a legal requirement that everything is accessible to all of our students um, up to reasonable accommodations. So things like keyboard accessibility and having ARIA labels for screen readers to interpret diagrams are um, crucial. Um, so I was glad to see that keyboard navigation is now in and I've spent the last week um, submitting improvements to that. Um, I think having good labels on individual objects to make um, diagrams explorable by a screen reader would be really good. Um, this is something I've, I've, I've put this item in the list, uh, objects draggable by default, and I realised later on you can fix that by just setting a board option. Um, it's just some, it's something that trips up um, authors making diagrams um, quite a lot is that they'll have a load of objects and not think about which one should be fixed. Um, and then when a student goes in, they can sort of drag points around and shapes that they shouldn't be able to. Um, so I don't know if the way that you create objects in JSX Graph should be changed to make that more obvious that you have to explicitly say whether it should move or not. Um, I've said about Jesse code, uh, I don't really understand it, but I use it a lot. Um, personally, I've found working out how to use the API quite difficult. Um, I know that there's, um, there was a project started last year about making a, a nicer book about JSX Graph. Um, and I don't know how much progress there's been on that. Um, I think that's something else that uh, I would want to work on as well. Um, and finally, I don't really refer to the examples wiki anymore. I don't know if I'm looking at it wrong, but finding something that's up to date and does what I want is, is tricky. Uh, so that's my long list of complaints. And I didn't want to spend too long on that. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you uh, how uh, JSX Graph looks in numbers now. Um, there's, uh, I think, within the authoring course on the Moodle site, I've, I've uploaded this as well. Um, so you can give it a go uh, and there'll be a link uh, through the slides to, to get it on the numbers editor. Um, so I've picked out a few questions that um, existed from our existing question bank um, and 
I spent the first few days trying to add more bits to the extension to improve marking in particular. Um, so, sort of to bring it up to speed with the GeoGebra extension, which I've spent more time on. Um, so this first question here is something that my colleague Chris came up with. It's a, an illustration of a, um, a pendulum. And um, the idea is that you enter a formula for the position of the pendulum over time, and it, it shows it to you. Um, so I can say something like cos of t, I don't know, something like that. Um, what I really like, uh, and I think it's worth saying, I think probably you, most of us appreciate this anyway, that having a link between the algebraic form of something and the visual is really uh, useful. And I think really helps people understand um, what's going on a bit better. It's, it's good for learning. Um, so this will get marked eventually. Um, the link here is one way. It's um, I type something in and it updates the board. There's nothing I can do in the board that um, affects this input. Um, so then some other things, uh, actually that's out of date now, but uh, um, so I can give the equation of this line um, and it's, it's very similar. So I y equals two x and it will draw that line now. Um, and uh, the rest I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to I think um, actually no, I'll show you show you this very old question this is I think my first question that I wrote using JSX graph and the idea is I want to plot this graph um, I think it's worth thinking about um, what how does this work well and how does this not work well here I've got um, lots of inputs and I can, I can drag these points up and down. Um, now what's that eight? That's going to go to five. Um, I don't know if this is worthwhile or not. I don't know if when I get something wrong, if that's if it's fair to like this is a cubic spine, I think. If it's fair to draw that as the graph. Um, yeah. Right. So. Um, so I'm going to talk about the, di the different ways you can make a, a JSX graph board in numbers. Um, you can write JavaScript, which was the, the, the original way it was. Um, and as I've said, I'm trying to deprecate that. I, I don't like it when question authors have to go into JavaScript. Um, apart from anything, it's it's hard to maintain um, sort of the link between numbers and JS graph. JSX graph changes over time. Um, and so a lot of our old JSX graph stuff relies on um, things in numbers or JSX graph that, that aren't there anymore. Um, so I don't like that. Um, another option is we've, we've got a function to create a, a diagram out of Jesse code. So you give it sort of dimensions and then a script and then uh, a dictionary of, of options for the board, um, which I think is my preferred option at the moment. Um, uh, you can substitute in question variables by, by using curly braces like everywhere else in numbers. Um, I think that works all right. Um, and then the final option, I think I saw one of the other systems yesterday doing this. You just give a list of um, list of objects to create. Uh, JME is the language that, that numbers uses. It's its own computer algebra system thing. Um, so this is a list of objects to make. Uh, and the reason that's in is because I, I that might be uh, an easier way of using all the, the tools that you have in numbers to create um, these objects. I'm not sure. Um, so I think um, it's worth talking about this. Um, this, this complicated problem of linking a diagram to answer inputs. Um, I don't know what the right solution is. I've spent today coming up with something which I've just got working 10 minutes before um, the, this session started. Um, what, what's the idea? Um, you want, I want to both be able to, if the student changes their answer to one of the input boxes, then to update the diagram to reflect that and to 
And conversely, if they move something in the diagram um, to update one of the inputs, um, having both of those at the same time is really difficult. Um, you might want to um, fill in an answer box with some derived property of a thing in the diagram, like the slope of a line or I don't know, the area of the intersection of two things. Um, and um, if the student changes what's in that input box, how do you reverse engineer the diagram to make it so that it satisfies whatever they put? Um, that's a tricky problem. Um, I don't, I, for a long time, I thought that the, the right way of doing that might be to um, do some kind of numerical solving in the, so I suppose the diagram's got some free parameters, just run a numerical solver on it to find the values that produce whichever result you're looking for. Um, that's what um, the numbers Euclides extension does, but it, it doesn't work completely robustly. Um, so I'm not sure about that. Um, so let's state the problem. Um, what kinds of input are there? So what can the student put in an input box or outside JSX graph? Um, and then the next slide will be what JSX graph can produce that it wants to fill in student inputs with. Um, so the student might type a numerical parameter. Um, so it might give the length of a side of a, of a polygon or something. Um, it might say a point on a parametric curve. Um, so the, the um, some point should move to whatever corresponds to X of T and Y of T. Um, so then those, that, that's sort of a one way thing. It's hard to go backwards from those from the diagram, uh, depending on how it's set up. Um, they might give coordinates for a point, and I think that that's a very natural, easy thing to have a two way link. And I think we saw some examples yesterday of that. Of, um, a student can type the coordinates for a point, or they can drag the point around. Um, something I've showed a couple of examples of here is the student gives a formula and the, the diagram shows it. Um, I think that's really useful to have. Um, but again, as a one way link, I don't know how you would um, allow the student to modify a, a plot of a function or something and then produce the corresponding formula. Um, and finally, I, I think having tick boxes to hide and show things or to enable or disable certain properties, I think would be really useful. And I've got an example of that in my demo, which I'll come back to. Um, so those are some kinds of inputs, um, some kinds of output. Um, so what might you read out of a diagram and use to fill in one of the answer boxes? Um, you might take the position of a point. Um, if it's a vector and you've got two input boxes to fill in, then that's good. Um, or you might just want one coordinate of it, or you might want to project it onto a curve and um, um, get the, the corresponding parameter. Um, or you might want to get a derived property of an object, whether it's a number or a, a Boolean. Um, so compute the area of some object or its length or the distance between things, um, an angle. Um, and then some more complicated stuff like, is this point inside this object or where, what's the relative position of some things? Um, which uh, we have a few examples of um, JSX graph in um, linear programming, which I think our economic students have to do, where they, they're given some constraints and you plot them and we encourage them to move uh, um, an objective line to find the best solution for the um the best assignment of goods or whatever it is um so you might want to read out the the position of that line from the diagram um, and take that as the answer to a part um so i think some of those are one way and some of those could very easily two way um so the solution that i have at the moment is um but in a, a numbers question parts marking algorithm, um, you, can, you can use um, some of these functions like JXG, slope or whatever. There's a whole load of functions that will query stuff out of a diagram um, and use that to produce the, the feedback for the part. Um, so uh, here is an example that I'll show you that in real, show you it running. Um, so create a line with a given gradient. 
um, I'm given, I have to make a gradient of one over four and y intercept zero. And I can do that by moving these two points around. Um, so I'm gonna, what is that? One over four, looks like that. And then I can move the, move the line as well. When I submit it, I get some feedback for those individual bits. Um, and if I get it a bit wrong, um, I can get um, some feedback, true or false, like correct or incorrect, but then also it can tell me what my gradient really is. Um, so that's quite good. Uh, and I think that's just towards the right end of the, the ease of use uh, scale for question authors to use that reliably. Um, so that mark algorithm here sort of, it gets the slope out from the diagram and then says, if it's the right one, add credit, otherwise give some negative feedback and tell them what, you, what their gradient is. Um, so that's good and I think that could be used a lot, but then the, the, the link the other way from an input into a diagram um, needs more thought. Um, so here's what I've been working on today. Um, I think the way to do this is to define um, inputs into the diagram and outputs out of the diagram separately, rather than providing a few two-way bindings um, that will um, that sort of work automatically, because um, you might want to do some complicated stuff. Um, so what I'm thinking at the moment is that I have, this is an input, so um, in a mark algorithm, this is, um, suppose the student has a, a matrix input, so here it would be um, one row and two columns representing a 2D vector. Um, so that would type some coordinates of a point um, and set the position of the point uh, with the name A uh, to those coordinates. That's the input. Um, and the output might be, you might want to fill in the position of that point uh, in those boxes. Um, so that's uh, this JXG output thing here. Um, and I don't know if that's a bit too complicated still. Uh, I think that can probably be improved, but um, I'll show you some examples of that. Um, here's a thing I've literally just made. Um, I was trying to think of a, a quick example I could make. Um, just in time. So I want to make a, a circle touch this given point P. I can type in its radius and I can type in the coordinates of the center or I can drag the point around and fill in those boxes. Um, so I might say I want to give this a radius of three and move it to zero, one. Um, so that works like that. Um, and I can submit the answer. Um, I was trying to think of, of other inputs than numbers that I could demonstrate. So I've, I've got a tick box here, so I can I can show a circle of radius one around that point P just in case it helps me. So there we go. So I could maybe have set up um, uh, attached to object um, attribute on this point that would let me drag that directly onto that circle. Um, and then I could give it, give my circle a circle of radius one. Um, and then that would work. So I'll just go with that there. Um, submit. There we go. Two points. Um, so that's where I am. Um, I think uh, that's probably all I had to say to you. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, so really, I, ju I just wanted to say this is um, JSX graph is something that lots of people are using in numbers. Um, uh, if you haven't seen numbers before, have a look at it. Um, and I'm hoping to develop um, the way the extension works a lot more. So thank you.